Hi, welcome to Road Bike Culture. I'm your guest, the Reverend Chris Rankin-Williams, Rector of St. John's Episcopal Church in Ross, California, and I'm an avid cyclist. I first learned about Reverend Chris a few months ago when I was researching an article in, about a story to do, and I came across his article in Peloton Magazine, and it was about spirituality, meditation, and road cycling. I thought it was such a compelling story. And when I found out he lived in Ross, I came out to talk to him and he's agreed to be on the show. Thank you for being on the show. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for asking me. In your article, you write about putting on a cycling kit and what that means to you as a cyclist. Would you care to tell us about that? Yeah, for me, putting a cycling kit on is an, an act of preparation. It's not just physically putting clothes on, but it's a real opportunity to mentally shift into what I'm about to do. It reminds me a lot of getting ready for uh, worship in the church where I'll put on my vestments before a, a Sunday worship service or other service and just gets my head ready. So it's more, um, it's like a bit of a meditation before I begin the activity. So it's more than just, uh, oh, I've got my athletic clothes on now, now I go ride, but it's really entering into the spirit of what I'm about to do. One of my favorite things about cycling, and you touched on this in your article, is the community that you feel as a road yeah. cyclist. And you yeah. mentioned that. Yeah, I, I mean, I love it. It's like getting to be part of um, a group or a club or a community. And, you know, I love being a priest um, and it can sometimes be isolating. And it's so great to go road riding with a group of people because um, I feel like I get to occupy different roles. Sometimes, you know, nobody knows what I do for a living and I'm just another guy on the ride and it's a lot of fun. Other times um, I feel like I'm on the ride and fully into my identity and, and as a priest and people get to encounter me in an a environment outside of church. Uh, so I've gotten to meet people and have conversations that you might not ever have about faith or spirituality which I've just loved. I've you know, got to meet some great people. We do a bike church service every now and then at the church where we do a bike ride uh, like to Lake Lagunitas on Mount Tam and do a service there. Uh, I've done three weddings from people I've met cycling that uh, haven't been to services here, but uh, we've been able to make that connection, which has been a real uh, blessing in my life. And I, I just love uh, getting together with some friends and we're all just, on the ride and uh, that feeling of uh, working together. That's part of what I like the most about a group ride is like we're all kind of in it together. You're, you know, sometimes you're going hard and you're trying to destroy everyone else and that's kind of fun. And then other times like you're all just trying to work together uh, and you need each other. And that's, there, there's a lesson in that uh, needing each other that I think is a, a big part of the Christian message and what a church community is about is, you know, you can't live your life fully in isolation. We need each other to be fully who we are. And I feel like I experience that in a unique way when I'm on a group ride. And part of my hope is that people who experience that on a group ride might be like, oh, you mean a spiritual community is trying to do the same thing. In the article you wrote about spirituality, meditation, and prayer, and how you can find that on the bike. Bike riding is a really important part of my prayer life. It's a place where I encounter God in a more uh, active way that sometimes for me is easier than sitting in church in silence. It's still entering into silence, but in a, a different way. Uh, a lot of prayer practices, spiritual practices are based around repetition and some simplicity and stillness. And I find uh, cycling mainly when I'm on my own, just entering into kind of a zone with the cadence or my breath um, or just the incredible beauty on a ride, getting to um, kind of go beyond, like go beyond myself by going into myself, if that makes sense. You know, oh, just really focused on breath, cadence, thinking about those things that help kind of mental distractions start to slip away and you can really enter into a, a, a spiritual zone for me. It's a, a place of prayer and encounter and um, listening because I, I think prayer is, sometimes we think of prayer only in terms of talking to God, but often the most important prayer is listening. And I feel like uh, cycling is often a place for me to, to listen and 
to, you know, especially on hard efforts, you know, you, you get to wrestle with your demons and <laughs> you never know what's going to come up when you're really suffering and you get to kind of deal with, deal with it. And, and it's part of what I like about it is kind of encountering myself and pushing myself and, um, spiritual growth is often about going um, beyond yourself. You know, you find yourself by going beyond yourself. Um, uh, in the article, I mentioned Carl Rahner, who said that, you know, the more we submit to God, the freer we become. And I think you find that in cycling, you know, when you, you kind of, the more you submit yourself to the climb or to the effort, you find something deeper within yourself. and in that moment or, or afterwards when you think about, you know, wow, I, I really dug deep or I went beyond where I've gone before and encountered myself in a, in a new way. And I love that. And, and uh, like I used to do a lot of surfing too and surfing and cycling have had some similarities for me because you, you have to be really focused on what you're doing or you're going down. So uh, I love that intense focus, which I think is one of the goals of prayer is entering, in, entering into a space of intense uh, focus and attentiveness and uh, presence, being, just being fully present in that moment. And you can't be, you know, you can't be thinking about a bunch of other stuff or you're going to get hurt or you're going to hurt someone else. So I love that and for me personally it's a lot easier to do on a bike than it is kneeling at a pew me too <laughs> yeah <laughs> i find it in both places right you know i mean everyone says you know oh i don't go to church i find god on mount tam like well i find god on mount tam too but i do need uh there's something about accountability and community which you see on a group ride you know there is that sense of connection and responsibility to other people but I think that needs to extend to our spiritual life too. I don't think a, a full or complete spiritual life or religious life can be lived uh, just in isolation. We all need teachers, we all need mentors, we all need to share the journey with other people. So you talked in there a little bit about suffering. And so what is the hardest climb you've done and what was going through your mind during that single moment? Uh, let's see. The, there's actually two climbs that come to mind. I did uh, the back side of uh, Mount Figueroa down by um, Solvang, and it was really hot and there was no wind moving. I was with a group of people and uh, it, you know, I kept getting dropped and it felt kind of uh, like, okay, like I don't want it was an organized ride. I don't want to get in the sag wagon, <laughs> so I got to do that. Uh, the av actual hardest ride I've ever done, uh, climb I've ever done, was uh, Pine Flat up in uh, Sonoma, right near Jimtown. Where you, it's a long, long climb, and at the crux of it, it's about uh, it hits over 20% for the last pitch, and um, it was like 98 degrees out. Um, I learned later that you're supposed to be off Figueroa by about 11 a.m. and I started at 1 p.m. And uh, it's that moment where you're going so hard and actually like, am I going to have heat stroke? Am I going to die? Like all the stuff that starts going through your head. And I had actually put a foot down because I was so gassed. But um, that... Uh, uh, that felt like defeat and I really struggled with that. But on really hard climbs, uh, I have to go in. I'm not a very strong climber, so I really have to go into myself and work. And, and uh, I feel like I'm constantly like telling myself to not stop, to keep going. And you just have to really push yourself and go inside of yourself in a way that um, is like I say, I say it becomes wrestling with your demons, you know, and, and uh, you build a lot of character. Um, there's a great passage in uh, Romans where St. Paul is talking about suffering of Christians. Some of that's based around persecution, but 
suffering is an important part of any faith journey. And in, in Romans, he writes that uh, suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us. And I, I just love that. To me, that's like the whole theology of cycling and, and suffering on a bike is, you know, that suffering and building up endurance and that creates character and, and that that leads to some kind of a, a hope. You know, when you get to the top of a climb you didn't think you could make, uh, it, it's kind of transformative. It's, it's exciting and, and it opens up a window onto viewing other challenges in your life in a, a new way. Like, okay, I actually made that or, well, I had to put a foot down, but I'm alive, I'm, you know, and I also, you know, it's really important, I think, to understand uh, I love suffering on a bike. I think it's really important to my own life. But also it's important as a Christian for me to understand that suffering on a bike is a privilege, right? To, to get to own a really nice bike and wear a nice kit and go cycling in these beautiful places is a privilege too. And so the suffering on the bike in, in a weird way often is a reminder to me of uh, of the deeper suffering of in humanity or of people in poverty and and the the privilege of suffering on a bike I hope helps remind me of the importance of trying to serve those people and alleviate their suffering so uh, in an odd way suffering on a bike reminds me of my privilege of getting to do that and uh, and I hope it helps me uh, not just get in better shape or go fat, climb faster, but, but actually get down the mountain and, and uh, you know, kind of like Moses or Jesus, come down the mountain and then do the work with the people. So what's the most difficult part of this occupation and what is the most rewarding part? The real hardest part, of course, is um, dealing with uh, death, really. Uh, being at a bedside when, with a family when life support is removed and doing last rites and saying those prayers. So it's really hard to be there in that moment. And, but it's also a real blessing, you know, um, those moments where families say goodbye to a loved one is, is deeply profound. So personally, it feels like the hardest and there are times where I feel like I, you know, there's no way I can do this. And sometimes putting the, my clergy shirt on is like putting a cycling kit on. It's like, okay, I'm getting into my role now and I can go and get beyond my own stuff and be present as a priest in the way that I'm supposed to be. So, but being in those moments can be really hard. Um, I've buried two cyclists that died as a result of bike crashes. Um, that's helped me slow down on descents a little, which is probably a good thing. Um, I would say the greatest blessing of, of this is really two things, sharing God's love with people and, and um, getting people to understand their faith in a, in a different way. You know, people will say to me like, Oh, I don't believe in religion. Like, well, I don't believe in religion. I believe in God. I practice a religion as part of my belief in God and trying to separate, you know, understand who God is and how church and religion is, is a, an intentional community of engaging in that life for our own growth and for the betterment of humanity that God created. Being with people in those precious moments of their lives, weddings, baptisms, um, funerals, deaths, uh, is, it's, it's really profound to get to be present in some of the most sacred moments of people's lives, whether they're deeply joyful moments, those are the most fun, uh, but also getting to be with families in, in difficult times, it, it just feels like a profound blessing to get to be present and hopefully um, convey God's love in, the, in that context. But baptisms, weddings, I love that stuff, or just getting to be with someone when they need 
someone to listen is is uh, really great. So, um, yeah, <laughs> you get a deal. You get a deal with all of it. But most of life is actually not those cathartic moments, right? Like right. Mo you know, it's like a it's like a bike ride, like riding a century or whatever. You know, there are those moments, those peak experiences of sprinting to the finish or getting to the top of a climb. But most of life is actually that, you know, trudge through the valley um, and, and uh, kind of part of my life and I think part of church is really not just about the peak experiences or the worst experiences, but actually, you know, sustaining life through what most of life is, the, how we spend most of our lives. So um, being there for that too. And I personally love uh, doing church in Marin. Marin's the home of spiritual, but not religious. And I talk to people and, you know, I think part of it is they, people who say they're spiritual, but not religious, I think have often experienced church people as people who are religious but not spiritual and to me trying to bring those worlds uh, together that's part of why uh, people who are open to encountering god or faith or spirituality uh, uh, maybe on a bike more than they're willing to in church is a, a really cool way to kind of you know the church has to be willing to adapt to the reality of the world. So I love doing church in Marin County is really an exciting opportunity and really cool. And, um, and also trying to demystify religion for people who say they're just opposed to religious institutions and also getting to transform the church. So that's, I came up with the motto for St. John's, Hydrate Your Soul, that was mentioned in the Peloton article, that was inspired actually by my experience cycling and the need to stay hydrated to be able to, to perform and how you time all that. And to me, that's, that's the spiritual life. That's what church is for in many ways, is hydrating your soul. You know, your body needs to be hydrated to keep riding and your soul has to be hydrated. And, gathering for worship, gathering in community is a really important way that, that we do that. One thing, so in the beginning of the video, we talked about a lot about road cycling, and then we talked a lot about uh, being a priest. One thing you do that I find is so fascinating is you have a Saturday service every so often? Yes, yes. So we started bike church is what we call it, and We'll often get together on a Saturday morning. Often it's a mountain bike ride because more parishioners are mountain bikers. Um, and we'll ride up to Lake Lagunitas or somewhere on Mount Tam or China Camp and ride for a while, gather at a beautiful spot overlooking the water or at a lake, sometimes celebrate the Eucharist or have a prayer circle. Um, at Lake Lagunitas, we've invited people who just happen to be walking by or riding by to join us. And, uh, it's a way to combine uh, the joy and the beauty of cycling with our faith and with prayer and go out into, um, you know, the greatest cathedral there is that God created, nature. And so we gather and do that. And it's been great. People who might not come here on a Sunday morning have joined us for bike church. And uh, it's it's been a fun way also for me to get to connect with uh, parishioners, you know, the the old, old image of the Episcopal Church was the rector who played golf and like, I don't golf, but uh, I'd love to go on a bike ride with you. And so it's a great way to connect with people in a setting that is maybe more comfortable. So it's trying to take kind of my two loves, church and cycling, and put them together. And it's been really well received by people who, who've come. I have friends who never come to church, but come to bike church.